Significant figures is one of those topics that students hate dealing with. And truth be told, they're probably one of my least favorite things to deal with myself. Because of this, it's really important for us to develop a good intuition for why significant figures are useful. Why should we fool with them at all in the first place? So the major goal of this video series is not only to give you a sense of what the rules are with significant figures, but also to make you aware of the motivation behind them and why it is so important to use significant figures. So the first question I want to address is this issue of why worry about significance at all. And to kind of put this in perspective, I want to lay out a relatively simple calculation for us here. 12.37 times 6.96 equals 86.0952. And the question I have for you here is taking a look at the numbers on the left and right hand sides of this equation, which number is more precise, the 6.96 or the 86.0952? Well, given the extra decimal places in the number on the right, we see that we have a number in the ten thousandths place in the number on the right, whereas we only have a number in the hundredths place in the 6.96. So we're getting a lot more precision out of the number on the right than the number on the left. There's an issue here. We're taking two numbers that have only two digits after the decimal and manufacturing a number that has four digits after the decimal simply by doing multiplication. We haven't measured anything to greater precision, but the results of the calculation look more precise than the numbers we started with. This is a huge issue, and to me, the thing we need to be aware of here, and the thing that should be kind of a law at the top of our minds, is that we must avoid manufacturing precision out of thin air. Simply multiplying two measurements with only two digits after the decimal cannot yield a result that has more than two digits after the decimal, because the true precision in both of our measurements and the result is really only two digits after the decimal place. In one sense, adding the extra digits after the 9 in the 86.0952 is tantamount to lying or saying that we know the 52 to an extra degree of precision than we really do because the errors that are implicit in the numbers on the left, we don't know the numbers that come after 7 in 12.37 and 6 in 6.96, translate into errors in the result that are masked by the extra digits. So what's the big picture here? Well, as we've seen indirectly, the more significant digits a number has, the more precise it is. And this idea of significant and the connection to precision is really important to keep in mind. So the 86.0952 here is far more significant and more precise than the 6.96. One of the reasons, for example, we continue to study numbers like pi, which have now, what, millions upon billions of digits known, is that we can know pi with greater and greater precision as we find more and more digits within this number. So more digits is a good thing. It leads us to more precise information. But calculations that use measurements that have limited precision, like 6.96 with only two digits after the decimal place, cannot introduce more precision than we start with. This is tantamount to lying. It's lying about our knowledge of the precision of the result of a calculation just because we've run that calculation. We haven't increased the precision of any of our measurements to any degree. We've just multiplied two numbers. This is really the most important thing to keep in mind when using significant figures. Calculations with measurements cannot introduce more precision than we start with. 